Volumia has been around for years now, publishing music players and streamer software for small board computers like the Raspberry Pi. A few years ago they started producing hardware for their software. The Integro is a combination of a streamer, a DAC and a 2x50 watts amplifier. The first hardware product was the Minuetto that used an Asus Thinkerboard S smallboard computer instead of the more popular Raspberry Pi. They still support Raspberry Pi, the Thinkerboard and the X86 and X64 PCs, but for the Integro they chose a Kada smallboard computer. And it has Class D amplifiers built in. But let's first see how it is to be used and buckle up for it does have quite a lot of options. The Integro is to be connected directly to a pair of loudspeakers. If you want to play music from a shared volume on your computer, you can connect it over USB cable. It is to be operated using a tablet, smartphone or computer on source selection, music selection and volume settings. Often it is more convenient to place the computer elsewhere in the house and connect it to the Integro over the network. The best way to do that is to install a DNLA music server program on your computer, for instance the free Minim server. But you can also connect a USB CD drive and play CDs that way. Or connect a USB hard disk containing music. Also your CD player can be connected over either SPDIF or analog connection. If the analog inputs aren't used for the CD player, you could connect for instance an FM tuner tool. If you want the TV sound over your stereo, the best way is to use an optical connection, the so called Toslink cable. You can even watch the Volumio user interface if you connect the HDMI output of the Integro to one of the HDMI inputs on your TV. If you connect a wireless mouse to one of the USB buses, you can operate the Integro from your TV. All these sources can be connected at the same time unless you use a mouse. Then either the USB drive or the CD drive has to be disconnected. The Intego is an elegant little amp that is typical Italian by design. It is also built in Italy. The outside is of grey anodized aluminium with a black perspex front and black metal rear. It measures 270 by 150 by 50 mm and weighs 1.3 kilos, excluding the external power brick that can easily be hidden behind the Integro. On the front left we see the power switch and input selector. Pressing switches it on and turning selects the input while icons on the display temporarily show what input is chosen. Next to it the 6.3 mm headphone jack. In the middle the OLED display that normally shows the volume setting except for when another input is chosen. The status LED indicates standby, loading or ready to use in the colors red, green and blue. Last but not least on the right the volume control that doubles as a mute button when pressed. The streaming related connections are on the left side. A USB 3 for USB storage, the gigabit Ethernet connector, the HDMI connector to show the user interface on a TV or monitor, the micro SD slot for extra storage, a USB C connector that is not used and a USB 2 connector for storage media. Then a SPDIF input and its optical sibling Toslink. There also is an analog line input on RCAs and a subwoofer line output. The power brick is to be connected here. To have the class D amp produce 2 times 50 watts in 8 ohms, it delivers 24 volts, 6 amps. When we look inside, we see a small board computer, as is often is the case with streamers. Sometimes it's a ready to use streaming module or a Raspberry Pi. Here it is a KDAS VIM3L. It uses an AmLogic. S905D3 system on a chip along with 2GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 
16 GB of eMMC flash storage and a neural processing unit capable up to 1.2 tops of performance. A Raspberry Pi designed microcontroller handles the screen, the controls and the input selection. This series WM8805 chip handles the SPDIF input signals. The Texas Instruments PCM5121 analog to digital converter chip converts the analog inputs to digital. This is necessary since the power stages function as a digital to analog converter too. While the KDAS SBC has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios, Volumio uses a separate Qualcomm piggyback board that does the APTX Bluetooth. Below it a Burr Brown PCM5122 DAC and a Texas Instruments TPA6120 chipset to drive the headphones output. It can deliver 2x480 mW in 32 ohm load. The SOP also has a separate DAC chip, this time the PCM5212. The Infineon MA1207OP Class D amplifiers with integrated DA conversion can be found here, surrounded by WIMA electrolytic capacitors. They deliver 50 watts per channel in 8 ohms or 70 watts in 4 ohms. It can handle PCM up to 192 kHz and DSD64. Operating the Integro from the front panel is simple. Press the left knob to switch it on, turn that knob to select the source using the icons and set volume with the right knob. For the rest you use the Volumio user interface. On tablet and smartphone you use the Volumio app. On a computer and on a smartphone or tablet if you don't want to use the app, you can use an internet browser. The Volumio app for iOS has a rating of 1 in the App Store, but it worked fine with me during the test period. But as said, you can also use the HTML user interface. Just type integro.local in your browser to start it up. October 2022 I reviewed the Volumio operating system extensively, so I'm not going to repeat the entire description. I will put a link to that review in the top right corner at the end of this video and in the description below this video in YouTube. But I will show you a piece of that review here, the part that describes the day to day use. It is important to know that when you buy the Integro you get all the Volumio Premium features. Selecting music to play is done with this icon. It brings you to an overview of sources as we know from earlier versions of Volumio. The music library brings you to the USB drive or network share if present. I have an SSD drive connected. Let's open that and choose Alison Waye and play a track. You now see at the bottom of the screen what's playing. When I close the browsing window, the cover art, track title, artist and album name appear. Below the artist name, the file type and sampling info. Then the hard to mark it as a favourite, the plus sign to add the track to a playlist and three little dots that send you to this menu with album credits, album story and artist story. The one you choose also appears next to the cover art in the playing screen. The other links bring you to the artist or album. In the lower left corner is the button to go to the play queue. I have talked about DNA and UPnP AV to play music from a share on a computer or NAS. When the DNA or UPnP AV server on the computer or NAS is running, it does the indexing locally and sends only metadata to the Volumio player to choose from. When a playlist, track or album is chosen, the music files are sent to the Volumio player. I have two Synology NASs running with both the standard media server and, especially for music, Minim server. This time I choose Minim server on the Syn 8 to go to artist and select the French singer Barbara. As you can see it all goes very smoothly. 
The same goes for web radio, Cobus and Tidal. Let me show you Tidal and go to the playlist I published earlier. Let's close this down with Tim Pan Alley. Unfortunately I can't switch on the sound for then I lose my rights to this video. The Integral was connected to the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers of my setup 2 over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that was connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Integro. I prefer that over a sub out, not only here but always. It is also advised by RHEL. Using a CAT6 patch cable the Integro was connected to the Upton Audio Ether Regen switch with Upton Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. To use the DNLA render function on the Integro, Minim server on the Synology DS1819 Plus NAS with the X517 extender was used. Since the Integro can also function as a Rune endpoint after installing a free plugin, I tested that using the Intel NUC 10i7 FNH that runs Rune Rock with music stored on a 10TB Western Digital USB drive. Volumio and Rune were controlled using an iPad Pro 11 inch second generation. I started off with my setup 3 loudspeakers, the modern short Avant 902s, which sounded great, but I had the feeling there was potentially more quality so I very soon switched to my setup 2 loudspeakers, the Acoustic Energy Radiance ones. Although they are not really difficult to drive, they do need an amp that is capable of delivering current. They have a sensibility of 86 dBs per 2.83 volts at 1 meter and the lowest impedance is 5.5 ohms at around 200 Hz. And I was not wrong. There was a convincing stereo image with good focusing. When the sub was connected, the modern shorts drop off from 50 Hz down. The lows were deep and were punchy when needed. There was only little coloration in the mid range and the highs were clean. All judged against its price of course. A visitor found the Integro looking like a toy. Apart from the fact that he is a design moron, the Integro doesn't sound like a toy. And it's very versatile, streaming from your own computer or from streaming services directly or after installing a plugin like Spotify, YouTube Music and Unrad Endpoint. Connecting all kinds of digital and analog sources, all controlled from your tablet or smartphone, and amplifiers that are capable of driving not only the easy loudspeakers, and all for 1199 euros including VAT. There are those on the web that don't like the Volumio software. They can't get it running stable on a their small board computer. That's the burden of making software for DIY products. They all use slightly different hardware and some users might overestimate their digital skills. Whenever I use Volumio, mainly on Raspberry Pis 2B, 3B and 4B, I always had it running perfectly. I now had the Integro run in for 5 days and nights continuously and never stopped or gave problems. During the listening test I used the Volumio user interface in all modes conceivable and again it worked flawlessly. It of course is easier to make software reliable when 100% of the hardware is known. And with that I'll end the show. I'll be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, Subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.